years. That's how long it took me to perfect my ritual, my routine of how I wanted to prepare myself to play at my absolute best in basketball. And today I'm gonna let you guys in on some of the things I learned on that journey and how it is I've been able to play six years now in overseas basketball. So let's go a day in the life. I'll show you guys a few things, what I've learned. So we gotta start from the start and that's the wake up. Now this is a big part that is overlooked for a lot of people. But when you are sleeping, you are becoming dehydrated, your body is getting rid of a lot of its liquids, it's sweating during its, in its sleep. So as soon as I wake up, what I do every day is basically I drink about a liter of water, more or less around there. And another thing is that for the vast majority of people, the first thing they do in the morning is that they look at their cell phones. If you are looking at your cell phone the first thing in the morning, that means you are being influenced by emails, work emails, social media, friends, family, all of these external forces and you are not actually centering yourself for your day. You're actually being pushed and pulled by these external forces as soon as you get up. So I always set a principle for me that I do not actually look at my cell phone for the first 30 minutes to an hour. Instead, what I'll do, I'll get a coffee, I'll get a tea, I'll maybe eat a few fruits, I'll read, I'll meditate, I'll do some affirmations, and I'll just center myself, think of the day, what do I want to accomplish today? What do I have in mind? What looks like a successful day to me today? Now, the next thing I'll do is I'll do something active. I'll get in my first workout of the day. Now, this will really depend on where I am, where you are overseas, how it will go. Because when I was in Latin America, I was basically always near a gym so I could get an individual skill work for about an hour, an hour and a half. But when I was in Germany, there was actually no gym near me. I actually needed a driver to take me 15 to 20 minutes to the gym. So that was not an option. So instead in Germany, what I would do is I would lift weights. If that was impossible, then I would just go for a jog or a walk. The point is, is that you're centering your day in that you're in the mood and a mindset of actually being ready to work, being ready to improve on your game. And the other thing you wanna do is do you want to work out first thing in the morning because this will actually release a lot of endorphins, get your mood elevated, it'll give you brain clarity. All of these things are gonna help you throughout the day and if you start out your day right with a good workout, I highly recommend working out in the morning for all you hoopers out there to set the mood, to set the mindset for the day. Now, usually when I come back from my workout, I'll be pretty hungry, pretty thirsty at this point. So I'm gonna get a lot of protein, a lot of carbohydrates in. Nutrition is one of the best ways to recover. Sleep and nutrition are the two key recovery points. All the other stuff that you do, that's just supplementary. So I really focus on in the morning, I'll get in a lot of protein, some eggs, some avocado for my fats, some carbohydrates, maybe some rice, some bread, something like that. And just basically I'll spend maybe an hour, an hour and a half, just relaxing, preparing my food, cleaning up, all these things. Now the next portion of my day is gonna be where there is the most time. And this is basically the dead time. You can ask any overseas basketball player, about 90% of them will have a huge gap in the middle of their day where there's dead time. Now you wanna make the absolute most of this, whatever it is that looks to you. If you wanna get in a second workout, that's what a lot of players do. For me personally, what I do, I actually work online. If I'm not doing that, then I usually, when I've been playing overseas, I've had an overseas basketball academy. But the point is you do not wanna waste this time. If you are able to somehow get an online income stream, some other a hobby or pastime during this time, instead of goofing off, you can double and triple your income stream. And I've seen guys do this all the time. They pick up something else that they do online. Teams are paying for their accommodation, for their living, for their food. So they're actually getting two to three incomes at the same time. So there's about a five or six gap window here. And this is really the key if you wanna have a fruitful, a profitable overseas career. Now, after this downtime, usually there will be an academy which I'll run in. I'll just stick to the gym right after because practice, team practice is usually at nighttime. It's gonna be about two to three hours around there. So you need to bring a snack, something like that. But then we'll just basically have a team practice for two to three hours and then we'll go out and we'll eat afterwards. Then after practice, we'll go home, we'll eat. Again, you gotta replenish, you gotta recover again. Nutrition being the most important thing, a lot of protein, a lot of carbohydrates to keep your body going. 
And then from there, actually what I'll do every night is I actually have about an hour to an hour and a half wind down where I don't actually look at any electronics at all. So I'll pretty much wind down for the hour and a half just doing things around the house and dimming down the lights little by little. If you guys have ever read the book, Why We Sleep, this is a great explanation of why we do this. It begins our sleep cycle, it begins our sleep process, and it lets us get more and more progressively tired so we can get into the REM sleep and get into the deep cycles of sleep that are so needed for athletes to recover. So for instance, when I put my phone away for the last hour, this is a trick that I learned. I'll go do the dishes, I'll go maybe brush my teeth, do my thing in the bathroom, shower, things like that, go to to bed maybe read about 10 pages of a book and by then it's already about an hour and a half when you're going through all of that this is a big key to helping you in your recovery process the wind up and the wind down is so huge i found in terms of recovery in terms of prevention of injuries all of these different things and then you'll do the same thing the next day so you know it's a lot of discipline there's as you see there there's not a lot of time to just be screwing around there you didn't hear me too often say that i'm chasing girls or i'm going out or i'm partying or anything like that but if you are committed to overseas basketball if you're committed to making this a lifestyle then you'll make those sacrifices for me and for me I knew that I wanted to keep playing, I wanted to keep going, so I knew that I had to make the sacrifice. So for me, it's 100% worth it. For others, it may not be, but this is the day in the life of me. So thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. If you guys have anything else that you'd like to learn, please leave a comment below. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Happy to always be bringing content to you guys. Love, peace, God bless, and keep on going in your basketball journey, okay? Take care.